Hello, welcome to Lumist. In this video, we're going to be solving the fifth free response question for the 2021 AP Calculus AB test. As you can see in this question, we're given a function f of x, but it is defined using an equation. So basically, if you look at it, it is defined implicitly. We're told that y is always positive. This is something we're going to need for one of the parts of this question. All right, we have to solve four parts and this question involves, as I already mentioned, implicit differentiation, the concept of tangent lines and extrema value points. For the first part, we must show that the first derivative of y with respect to x is equal to some function of y and x. So to do that, we're going to use implicit differentiation. All right, what does that mean? We're going to consider this equation over here and we're going to differentiate on both sides to find dy dx. Remember that y is a function of x. So whenever we differentiate an expression containing y, we have to use the chain rule. So on the left side, we're going to get 4y times dy dx. All right, so basically I'm just differentiating y squared, so which is 2y and then I multiply by the inner derivative. The derivative of six, a constant is zero. This is equal to, in here we have a product. We use the product rule. So derivative of y with respect to x, sine x plus y, and the derivative of sine, which is cosine of x. Excellent. From this equation, we can say that 4y times dy dx minus sine of x, times dy dx, so basically I am factoring out dy dx is equal to y cosine of x. And as you can see from here, we're going to get what we want. Our conclusion is that dy dx is just equal to y cosine of x divided by what we want for y minus sine of x. This is it, this is part A. All right, let's go and solve part B. So for part B, we must write an equation for the tangent line to the curve at certain given point. So first of all, notice that for our solution, we have a point of coordinates x0, which is zero, and y0, which is the square root of three. This is the point that contains, or this point belongs to the line tangent to the curve. Now we need to find the slope. So the slope, is just going to be given by the derivative of y with respect to x at the point of coordinates x0, y0, so meaning 0 square root of 3. So for this part, we're going to use the equation we obtained in part A. We plug in the values, and this is what we obtain. All right, so as we know, cosine of 0 is equal to 1, sine of 0 is equal to 0. So after simplifying, we get 1 divided by 4. This is the slope of the tangent line. Now, the equation of the tangent line is given by, you know, we have a point that belongs to the line and the slope. So y minus the square root of 3 is equal to 1 fourth of x minus the point, so x. We can just leave the equation like that, or we can just express y as a function of x. The question is not asking for any particular uh, equation, so we can leave it like that. And this is part B. As for part C, we must uh, find here the coordinates of the point where the tangent line to the curve, he is horizontal. X belongs to the closed interval 0 pi and Y is positive. So for this solution, we must remember what is the meaning of the tangent line to be horizontal. So we must find the solution to the following equation, dy dx equals to zero. Why? Because that's going to give us the slope of the tangent line equal to zero, meaning a horizontal tangent line. So what is the meaning of this? Remember from our first part that dy dx is exactly y cosine of x divided by 4y minus the sine of x. So we want to find the values of x and y that make this equation equal to zero. This is a quotient, therefore we want to find the values of x and y such that y cosine of x is exactly zero. 
And since this is a product, this is the same as asking for y to be equal to zero or the cosine of x to be equal to zero. However, if you look at the hypothesis, we have that y must be positive. Therefore, this solution is not valid. The only solution to that equation comes from the equation cosine of x equals to zero. So the conclusion is the following. dy dx is equal to zero only if and only if the cosine of x is equal to zero and x belongs to the closed interval zero comma pi. Now, the only place where the cosine of x is equal to zero between zero and pi is when x is equal to pi divided by two. x must be equal to pi divided by two. Excellent. So that gives us uh, the place where the curve has horizontal tangent, but we must find the coordinates of that point. So if x is equal to pi over two, now uh, we plug in and we obtain, so we, we have to plug in into here and we obtain the following. So two y squared minus six is equal to y times the sine of pi divided by two. Now, what is the sine of pi divided by two? So the sine of pi divided by two is exactly one. So we must, now we must solve a very simple equation. So two y squared minus y minus six equals to zero. We can factorize this expression as two y plus three times y minus two equals to zero. Remember that y must be positive. Therefore, the only solution that makes sense here is when y is equal to two. Since y is positive, we must have that y is equal to two. So the coordinates we're looking for are x equals to pi divided by two and y equals to two. And that's the end of part C. Now for part D, we need to determine if F has a relative minimum or maximum or neither at the point found in part C. So remember that that point has coordinates x equals to pi divided by two and y equals to two. Now to determine whether F has a relative max or mean, we can find the second derivative of F with respect to x. We plug in the values and depending on the sign, we can uh, find our answer. So we will use the second derivative test. So to make use of that, we compute the second derivative of y with respect to x. All right, so we have the formula from part A and when we differentiate that, we must use the quotient rule and we get 4y minus sine of x times, so we're using basically the uh, quotient rule, so the derivative of y with respect to x, cosine of x minus y sine of x, minus now y cosine of x times four dy dx minus the cosine of x. Excellent, I have to divide this, all of that, by four y minus sine of x squared. So again, I am just using the first derivative obtained in part A, and I am differentiating one more time using the quotient rule. Now remember that we are interested in the second derivative with respect to x squared at the point of coordinates pi divided by two comma two. When we plug in these values into our second derivative, we're going to find the following. So first of all here, y is equal to two, so I get eight. Uh, sine of pi divided by two is equal to one. So I get eight minus one. And then in the second expression, remember that at this point, we get a horizontal tangent line. That means that this expression is equal to zero. All right. And as for this expression here, we're going to get uh, minus two times the sine of pi divided by two. So we're going to get minus two here. As for the other expression, so here again, we have zero. Uh, here we have uh, y. So that means that we're going to get here minus two times the cosine of pi 
divided by two. But remember, uh, the cosine of pi divided by two is zero and the derivative at that point is also zero. So I'm basically multiplying this by two. And now I'm going to divide by four y. So that's eight minus the sine of pi divided by two, which is one squared. So basically this is equal to everything here goes to zero. So this is uh, seven times minus two minus 14. And then I divide by this number gives me seven squared is 49. So that is the value of the second derivative of y with respect to x squared at the point of coordinates pi divided by two and two. Now notice that this has negative sign. My conclusion is the following. The function f of x has a relative or as also people call it local maximum at the point of coordinates pi divided by two comma two. Why? Because this sign is negative. That is the end of part D. Hey guys, make sure to check out our server at Discord. Here you can hook up with guys who are on the way to nail down the AP test just like you. Plus tons of study resource packages. Did I ever mention what's really cool here? We've got one-on-one -on -one QA service for you guys for absolutely free. I will see you guys here. Click the link down to the comment area or the link on the homepage of YouTube to join me.